the Labour Party has won an overwhelming majority at the general election. I accepted an invitation from His Majesty the King to form the next government of this great nation. With Conservative figures like Liz Truss, Grant Shapps and Penny Morden all losing their seats. So, why did Labour win? In 2019, Jeremy Corbyn led Labour to one of its worst election defeats in history. In contrast, the Tories enjoyed one of their best election results, with Boris Johnson promising to get Brexit done. Enter Sir Keir Starmer. Starmer has led his party into a new era, promising to change the Labour movement fundamentally from the Corbyn days. He worked to rebuild the party during Johnson's tenure, which was rocked by scandals and setbacks. Johnson out! Images surfaced which appeared to show Boris Johnson attending several parties in number 10 at the height of the COVID pandemic. As the scandal rumbled on, it later emerged that Boris Johnson's deputy chief whip, Chris Pincher, had been appointed despite Johnson's knowledge of numerous sexual assault allegations against him. What I wanted was to give Chris Pincher, if not the benefit of that, then the ability to prove that he could do better. Pincher resigned and, a few days later, so did Johnson. There should be a new leader of that party and therefore a new prime minister. Liz Truss took to the helm of the Conservative Party after a bitter leadership contest with Rishi Sunak. I am determined to deliver. Just days later, Liz Truss's unfunded tax cuts destabilised the markets. And 41 days later... I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. Sunak was quickly appointed Prime Minister. His aim? To rid the party of chaos and uncertainty. But the damage was done. The Tory party's approval ratings had already plummeted. They continued to struggle with rising illegal migration and high inflation. As Sunak's problems mounted, the now former Prime Minister shocked us all. And we will have a general election on the 4th of July. From day one, Sunak's campaign struggled to gain momentum. He caused public outrage after leaving the D-Day commemorations early for a television interview. On reflection, that was a mistake and I apologise. To make matters worse, Nigel Farage returned to frontline politics, announcing his candidacy for Clacton and his leadership of Reform UK. Polling data soon revealed a big shift among Conservative voters to reform. The SNP stronghold in Scotland collapsed too, and Labour capitalised on the party's implosion following Nicola Sturgeon's exit in 2023. The new Prime Minister now has a huge mandate to implement Labour's policies. And after 14 years of Conservative rule, the pressure is now on Keir Starmer to deliver. <laughs>